without having to listen to their stand-up, just seeing Bob Saget talk to Patrice O'Neill, what was interesting is they were being human. So now we're getting ready for this stand-up portion of this show that I will not be involved with. Now I can tell Paul Provenza I actually did go on stage. Hey, Paul, I just did a set. You missed it. It was a tight one. Listen, motherfucker, let me make this clear. I've had your perfect poetry up to here. Your tender recollections and wistful reminisce. Excuse me, Mr. Shakespeare, while I go have a piss. This is somebody. Bump of I told you it was for the old days. It was a TED talk. And you just had the big. You still have the white circle. Oh my so god! Oh my god! Andy, oh my god. That explains oh. Andy's set. What explains but, hey, the set? Hey, hey, oh, sorry, man. Let's not all talk over all right. each other like you do in your own head. All right. It's a fucking struggle just to get him to finish a sentence. But anyway, here's the deal. Andy, many years ago. With uh, Doug's help and a few other people's help. I thought molested. you were going to say was molested yes. with my help. <laughs> uh, they confronted Andy's childhood molester. He, he lives in a gated community yeah. in Florida. Emphasis and, on the gay, am I right? And they, uh, and, and they, they went down and uh, sandbagged the guy, basically. I don't want to tell you well, too Well, legally, we, uh, we asked him to come out and visit with us. That's right. Yeah. They lured him out. They lured him out of they groomed him. the gated They groomed him out of the gated community. And so they confronted him, and that was on tape. And then I've been working for since the late 50s, I think, on this documentary. Yes. Yes. Andy tracked this guy down, and he found out, as you do in Google searches, he found out where the guy is. And he had a plan. He was going to swim across. <laughs> A, a pond well, to get into the gated community in South Florida. And he goes, well, if I can't get in through the gate, I'm uh, me and my dunce friend who's going <laughs> to swim with one hand and carry a camera. I'm like, you're going to get eaten by alligators. Let me come down and help. So we got the guy on camera. Thanks that's to a, me, that's mostly. A short. Mostly, <laughs> mostly, yeah. mostly yeah. thanks to me. Yeah. You they, headlined that? Too? I had. Yeah. Andy, when, he, when Andy pitched this to me, he said, I want to get down there and I want to just like have him come out of the house and see me naked on the lawn, you know, well, shirtless on the lawn, lifting weights. And then he would have well, recognized you. I did make an attempt to get down to my molested weight, which is kind of, <laughs> you can't even get into your high school jeans, let alone your middle school panties, you know? Uh, so I got my hair blonde or whatever. I wanted him to recognize me, but. Uh, How do yeah. you like me now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, has your uh, hand grip gotten any stronger? Uh, you know. A lot of people give a, a good goddamn about you, and we want you to get some help. Yeah, yeah. We're well, here to tell you, if you talk about being molested anymore, we're going to stop talking to you. Your intervention is you can never talk about being molested again. You have beat this fucking flagging Molly. Hey, you death. guys heard about my cancer, right? <laughs> Christine Levine <laughs> just dropped a hundred pounds from cancer. Why are Thank you God. complaining? Yeah. Why are you the victim? I'm not, I'm, and she's the hero. I, I didn't. I'm, I'm not somebody who beat cancer because then people will stop sending you money on the internet. Yeah. We gotta keep them guessing, babe. I might still have the cancer, Maybe. but here's the thing: you we don't. All these the fucking kid. people say, "Hey, I beat the cancer. Yeah. I beat it." We didn't you don't. Beat it. The only way you beat cancer is to die from something else. That's right. Pump the brakes. <laughs> Pump the brakes on that. Andy, your cancer was the best thing that happened to us. It shut you up oh, about the molestation. Man. For like yeah, I was six thinking, months. how do I make sure. money? You know, I don't want to go on the road. And, and then I was like, fucking cancer. Oh. Boom. And it made me sick for a while. And, and then go fund me. What? Yeah, that's, thank you. If anybody donated to that, I, I didn't want to get on blast that I had cancer because I wanted to just Irish goodbye. Uh, Hi, I, I'm an old white man. Can I just say, did you say on blast? <laughs> I, think, I, think, as, I think you said that. LOL, bro. <laughs> LOL, bro. You guys, you're all fearless. You all talk about like deeply personal shit. As well, if Henry it, does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But Henry's just a prop actor. Yeah, it's true, it's true. You have to be so vulnerable to play music at a comedy show. It's true. Henry has never had a deeply personal moment in his life. <laughs> there was one. There was one time in Tennessee, I believe, oh, no, where no. Henry had temptation. The uh, incident at the family hotel? Yes. Yeah. Listen, uh, I remember it well. And yet we all know that Henry wants to die. We all know I, I want to say, dead. well, a couple we things. <laughs> We're getting into all kinds of stuff, yeah, but yeah, yeah. going back, <laughs> the prop thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I went to the San Francisco <laughs> punchline in like 97 <laughs> or something like that, and Doug and I were all, already friends and he was like you're going there with your guitar and I was like yeah and you said something like that's gonna be like a porn star showing up to a shoot who's the guy that has herpes or something like that and, was like, and it was absolutely true and I had herpes which sucked too. but then yeah okay yeah and then there was Knoxville or whatever that was yeah, yeah we, we all had a night off he was on the road Andy and I were on the road we convened we had a night off and we got yeah, uh, yeah, we had a night off in a God, fucking no, hotel room. This we guy? all He's shared a, with uh, Lynn Shawcroft shocked at vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the old winner Hedberg. Uh, she's still mouthing off, but she has all her teeth now. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Don't don't skip over being at the. Bar. We were very yeah, drunk. Yeah, yeah. This is back in the back page. When, when uh, you get hookers for amusement, not necessarily it's, sex. It's you know? when you guys got the gig on the Man Show. Let's let Henry tell the story. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew I was the odd when you're hanging out with, when it's three dudes. There's always one guy who. Get shat on, and that was me this whole trip. And I showed up to like Knoxville or Chattanooga, it was one of those two. And I was like, hey, what's up, guys? And you guys were working. And so we went to a bar across the street from the hotel, and I was sitting there, and it was like about eight times in a row I thought I heard uh, Faithfully by Journey on the jukebox. <laughs> I was like, wow, they keep playing this one, huh? And then I looked, and I'm like, hey, where'd you guys? Hey, it's just me. And then there's like <laughs> 10 biker dudes going, yeah, I think it might be that guy. And I realized that you guys stacked up the jukebox so it was going to play faithfully like a hundred times. Yeah. And they were looking to kick somebody's ass. And I'm like, oh, you fuckers. Yeah, it does sound familiar. And yeah, let, let's cut to the hooker. Yeah, the yeah, hooker. yeah. And then, and then the, it gets a lot darker from that point. Yeah. This is how we, I still roll like this. Roll. There's three of us. Yeah, with, we haven't with your had homies? fucking food here. <laughs> You're on the road with me. Yeah, three of us will stay in one room, and Andy and I'll slum in one queen bed, and you'll go alone in one, unless we call a prostitute, which we did. So we call in Tennessee, they're dancers. So we go, oh, we'll have her come over and dance, and we asked her. Like, hey, put on some music. She had like a little boom no, box. She didn't have music and her pimp was, shit, what was he doing, man? Bring the music in for your dancer. I don't want to micromanage the pimp, but uh, she didn't show. We had to turn on. We had on. to uh, tune in yeah, yeah. to FM Hot Rush Limbaugh. Uh, go ahead and give it a try there. Uh, but yeah, no, we didn't. We never had. Here's the, I've never ever seen Henry Phillips mad. I think this goes back to the, where we, yeah. the original point. But the one time, <laughs> he was going to get a hand job from the lady in the toilet. Well, he was, and we interrupted it oh, and made fun. Oh, By the way, my wife and her parents are here somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I used, to, I tried to be a prostitute for a minute, you know, and I was like 320 pounds, and I don't know how this happened, but not disqualified. The, yeah, no, I know no, that's no, definitely no. a market. It, yeah, no, there is. Yeah. It's the equivalent of if you're a comic that you have a guitar. Yes, you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I was a prop yeah. prostitute yeah. with the fat, the extra hundred pounds. So I was like 320 pounds, and all the guys wanted was to uh, smell my feet or make me sit on a cake. But I was like, why? Can I eat the cake? Oh yeah, you can eat the cake, but you gotta sit on it first. They wanted to like, like make a. They want to fuck my belly and like come in my belly button and make a fat belly burrito with their penis and then just like hump my. Be it that just, seems like, so much easier than what so Andy easy. went through. I know. <laughs> that sounds to me like some easy money. It was pretty 
pretty good, but you know, eventually I was kind of like, when does the banging start? When do you get my pussy? And they're just like, can I just smell your feet and talk about my wife? What? And so I couldn't, I couldn't figure out like, how did they figure out that fat girls have smelly feet? Did they like the fat before the smell or the feet first? And then they were like, oh, fat women have the smelly feet. Well, there's a lot more pressure on the feet. So the probably, you know, yeah, so <laughs> Dr. Scholes did some research back in the day. <laughs> but I did try to figure, I did want did, to be a prostitute Do you feel like now that because of the cancer and you lost a hundred pounds because of that, do you feel like now I don't have a B yes, plan? Yes, I don't have an angle. No, but no, and but your if, feet if small. If your body doesn't too. work out, I can't go back to fatty fucking whore. Yes, like, but. I'm too, I'm too thin now? Yes, I'm too skinny to be a BBW, but I have enough skin. Can somebody make a note of these websites? Okay, uh. but I have enough extra skin now to make a full dick burrito. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. Show us, show us, show us, show us, show us. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't do it. Don't fall. Don't be don't your fall. nightmare, not me. This is my French friend's Pierre Pressure. <laughs> Did you? Your molestation happened yes. when you were just a child. Yes. And you've been talking about it yes. for most of your adult life. And okay. you went through the prostitution phase. You worked in the porn shop. I worked you, in the how porn much shop. of all of, the, of your life do you think was driven by the experience you had? All of it. All of it. Uh, it's so funny that you say that because, like, okay, can I just tell this? My, the, the day I found out that the guy who molested me passed away, I was working in the same building that my mother used to work at. Okay, so the, this guy, this old man walks into the building one day and he goes, hey, this is a porn store now. And I said, yep. He goes, do you know what it used to be? I go, a crab, the crab bowl. And he goes, he looks at me and he goes, are you Susie's daughter? And I said, yes. And he said, oh my God, I'm Woofy. He was a guy that I used to sit with in that same building when I was four years old. I was like, oh my God, Woofy. And then he goes, hey, did you know that Marion McBride, the, the her son, Michael, is the one who molested me. And he goes, her son died. And I go, which one? You know what I mean? I was like, she only had two. I was so excited. I got horny. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Turns out Marianne lost both her sons. Who this is like shit? Game of Thrones. There's too many characters <laughs> coming in at once. I guess. My so molestation clear. was just me and Steve. <laughs> yeah. I understand that relationship. So, <laughs> Michael, so, so Michael, I guess, was killed on the side of the road somehow. I don't know. Like, it was just so fucking surreal. And then snow started falling. It was so poetic. Do you just know that old industry people are here and you're hoping someone picks this <laughs> show up and oh, the snow oh, fell. Are and industry then... people here? <laughs> I did not know. And Wolfie looked like Cuba Gooding Jr. Yes, and he was so cute. The point is, is that honestly, like I found out that the guy who molested me was dead at, when I was working at the porn store and I had so much fucking peace about it. I was so happy. But my whole life has been like a affected by this everything has been uh, is been upended by the fact that this guy wanted to i don't know touch me i was fascinating you were a fascinating four-year-old it's hard to reclaim your treasures <laughs> uh, yeah I, I was something you know yeah, you know, you know, you know why i peaked in kindergarten <laughs> i i, I don't want to lean into pro pedophile but i get sometimes maybe they just uh, want less conversation they go, well, let's just get to it or whatever. Yeah, you, right. you, you, your story, how, how did that experience it's cause fine, the twists and turns that you had? Well, you say that. No, it's not fun. Hang on, hang on. There's a Shasta grape I know. on the That's table. The did you think there was going to be diversity on this show? He's giving us to the best molestation. <laughs> have a good grape soda. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's fine, guys. I don't mean to interrupt you guys with my <laughs> tragic oh, story, man. my origin story, but it's fine. I have to hear everything about No, your I was, I got jerked off on by my art teacher in high school. Jerked oh. off on? Yes, he jerked off on me. I was his canvas. How do you know 
was a that was his quiet. canvas. You <laughs> <laughs> stepped on that. I can't believe I stepped on that. Uh, Repeat uh, that because it's too funny. You want me to repeat? You were the canvas. Of his I don't like you directing my stories. <laughs> I felt bad. Good. Never feel bad. And uh, I took him to court and. Um, he got three years probation. He was. I found out he was diddling a bunch of other students. Jealous. He got three. I was like, it's not just me. <laughs> no, he was actually really mean to me. It wasn't like flattering at all. He yeah. was also rude to me. Oh. But he was a white guy with dreads, so it's you really awesome. You can't paint that at all. You're <laughs> the fucking worst artist. He made me draw while he was drawing out me. That's so funny. He's like, more shading, more Tip shading. Tiffany, the turtle never looked like that. <laughs> no, he was a white guy with dreads. It's like, this is on my parents, you know. It's really like, what are we doing here? But it was a grooming. It was like they would like buy us alcohol and weed. We'd go over to their house, and they would just. Who's they? Him and his wife. Oh my God. Him and his wife? Yeah, yeah. Who was my English teacher. Okay, oh, now, fuck. Now. But then, wait, wait, there's more, there's more. I thought it was like a bad couple in the school. So I take them to court. I have no real support at all from anyone. My parents were like, You had supportive. no real support. Sorry, as an what English teacher. Oh, stop. <laughs> wait, what? Oh, he's grooming your English. English. You changed tense. I have no real support. No, I had if you're gonna. Because when you're talking about trauma, you're in it. In the moment. Oh, so, yes, you say I was I making have... an English teacher joke. <laughs> why are you fucking over I'm just saying that if she did that, that's why. What? I'm by in the therapy way, now. Why this way, is Douglas... why I said we need to have rehearsals before this. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have. Oh, Never yeah. improv without rehearsals. You did say, no, let's not no, do but... stand up, let's do a rehearsal, a dry run. So also, have... Andy, why are you so tan? What's going on? Cancer Did you fall therapy? asleep in the sun? When you have yeah. cancer and you go out in the sun and shit, cancer's like once you to get back. You are so full of shit. I don't like to be, you know, color shamed or whatever. You know, I. Uh, we need a one POC. In I, the group, I use so a I sunscreen just... that does it says it uh, blends your face or whatever. So I am maybe probably a little tanning uh, that way. But <laughs> I, I've been a victim of sex with a crippled guy and I had cancer and now I'm getting confronted about it probably hurt skin <laughs> tone. <laughs> All right, here's what's fascinating to me from in terms of like comedy and shit, right? Yeah. What's really fascinating to me is like your story involves so many people around you that had been molested as kids that never talked to one another, yeah, including yeah. your own brother. This guy made a pass at your own brother before he found you. I kind of witnessed one of my brothers getting raped, and I didn't really pay attention that much around the house or whatever. So I, you know, I, later I found out about it. Uh, oh, that's what was going on up in there. <laughs> It yeah, I like think that one needs a little bit more explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say my, my house was like a Shawshank Redemption and there was a lot of Andy Dufresne's in the house. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> but see, here's the thing is that, that, that a lot of people, you know, they go through this thing where they're, they're embarrassed, they're ashamed, it fucks them up, they internalize, they self-medicate, all that sort of stuff. And I've, I feel like you guys get up there and you talk about it and you make it funny and you once said something really interesting well, about that. after we confronted his... Uh, molester. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we did a show somewhere in South Florida, West Palm. There are so many people that play the victim card, and you know them. Everyone like knows a person that. Oh, you can't make fun about that thing in front of Sherry because Sherry has made her whole personality about that. Yep. Or that guy, that woman, that whatever it is. We're all fucking L.A. people, attention whores. For whatever reason, you want attention and get to the point. Yeah, finish us off. Yes. Come yeah. on, so jerk, off, jerk off on me like I'm a teacher. Come on, come on me. And you go, oh, I was raped by a thousand guys. Oh, thank you for the patting me on the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, and then Andy goes on stage and talks and, and makes fun so of funny. your yes. fucking victimhood. You're walking around with a fucking cross. Oh, don't make fun. And then, oh wait, everyone's laughing. He went through the same thing, and everyone's laughing, and everyone's happy. And now you're a douchebag, Sherry. Sherry's a douchebag. Why can't you be funny like Andy? Here, here. Thank you. I knew you were going to do it. Because Sherry takes the time to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> when we do jokes like this, we get attacked by people. And I think, oh, so what are you doing? So we have already suffered through a bunch of shit, and this is how we choose to process it. And then we get jumped on by 
you know, what uh, some comedians Who's go, oh, on you? oh, you don't yeah, think that people you. won't attack you for talking about this stuff? Ooh. I have. You need I to turn your been, dams off, girl. Exactly. No, no I, I know, but I have been people like, complain. People, yes, they people do complain. The and I have sometimes been compl like are, are fucking traumatized. I work in by regular this shit. terrestrial radio, and do when anytime I talk about what happened to me, I get people responding, going, "I am triggered." Like exactly what you're talking about. I am triggered by that. You can't talk about that. And I'm like, you know what? I do talk about it, and I do make jokes about it. Because it happened to me, and that's how I want to process it. And if it happened to you, and you don't want to process it like that, turn the fucking channel. You're triggering you can be me right an now. Adult. <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, my, I have the, I just have people tell me all their molested stories. I'm like, ooh, here we go. Oh, I bet. All the time. I got my yeah. meet and greet lines are just like a hundred people telling me who diddled them, and then I'm selling my merch at the same time, yeah. so they're in the middle, like my uncle, and I go, uh, cash or card, baby. <laughs> 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 it's like exactly. so sad. I'm like, I'm sorry. But I have found out that there's all these other molesters at my school, that there were like so many molesters at the school. So I think I propose we do me next. It's Doug Stanhope presents yeah, yeah. Taking Down Pedophiles. Yeah, he, ah, I, yeah. Directed by Paul Provenza. I would have just con confused the pedophile with my, my schemes, and Doug did cut through it. It's uh, so funny that you're going to swim. You're going to be show up wet. I was, no, I was gonna, I, you're going to be wet. Was, you're all slippery like, and sliding I, around. He went to like Goodwill and bought like cable guy outfits. <laughs> yeah, was, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Andy, you know, as you've grown to know Andy, Andy will call you up and tell you, I got an idea, and you go, he's never gonna do that. So i would heard all these iterations of Andy's gonna go confront his pedophile, I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, I got a call coming in. And, uh, and then when he said, yeah, I bought plane tickets uh -oh. for me and this stooge that fucking lives locally, he'll film it. That's like Chris Castles. He's yeah, always yeah, really yeah, right there. He's actually right here. Yeah, there, there, there he is. There he is. I, acci I accidentally mentioned him in my special, and I go, "That's the first thing we're cutting out." <laughs> he, uh, as much as as much right. sport as you're making of Chris, he followed when my I busted my pedophile, but Chris followed him. He, he swapped with. I, you know, I wasn't attracted to it, but he walked with his ass sort of lifted from his whatever. Uh -huh. So it's like, oh, well, there it is again, And he man. wasn't a black girl. He was no, not a black that. girl, walked no. Like cultural appropriation. <laughs> he walked like a black lady. Yeah. But Chris followed him all the way to the car. We had the confrontation, and as he, he, this dude takes off, then confirming he still had my sexy videos. You know, he was a sweet Wait, little honeypot. Wait, does he still pot. have the videos? I think so, because he took off from oh the scene. Oh my god, you gotta go find a VCR to watch the yeah. station. No, I'm a little older than that. I was one of the first kids molested on Beta. beta <laughs> <laughs> so You're even as a child, beta. you made all the wrong career choices. Uh, yeah, and Beta. he still doesn't have a Wikipedia Be page. Beta was, get, it was like getting oh, raped no. on CISO. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, Andy. What, did you, what, what happened when you met with the guy? Now, I have the footage, and I've uh, watched it a, a million times. Yeah, very, you know, and you were Overcome with a lot of emotions and a lot. Oh, you didn't yeah. know whether you wanted to be angry. You didn't know. What, you kind of went I into it. I wanted the car. I wanted it to end like like Nixon Frost, and then we just go car shopping. <laughs> <laughs> because that's really kind of what it comes down to. The molestation was whatever, you know, me. <laughs> but he did he did promise to, to buy me a car when I graduated, and even though I broke things off. The it, molestation. He's got his right. On Yelp, that most molestation sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a title idea for the movie. Fuck off, Stooge. Dude, Dude, where's my car, too? Yeah, yeah so I, that's kind of actually where I was going. I was like kind of the original, where's my car, cars for kids. Like, uh, but he said, yeah, I guess it's kind of like OCD, but he broke the contract. But I also kind of called him a faggot, or you know, there was a there was a word. It was thrown oh, around back in the day. Back in the day. Uh, cancel him! Oh, no. How dare you call a molester a faggot? Oh. Cancel him! <laughs> so I had to sleep with him because there's just that was the arrangement, and that's how I made the gig money. Is that why you sleep in bed with him? To... No, that's that, no, no. Uh, that comes later. Have you heard of the lemon party photo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the powder party. But we have some oldies here, remember? <laughs>
So, but I, I wore, wore these uh, sweatpants to bed, and he never liked, you know, he never liked that sort of business. So I was trying to turn him off or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he tried to reach in my pants, and I had the drawstrings tight. I oh. wish I'd have thought of it a few years earlier. <laughs> it sure would have saved some uh, problems in my life. But so I cinched the pants up, and he goes, "What's this?" And he got mad. And I like, like a and woman. Then, but here's what I said. Here's what I said, what? Uh, homosexual peoples of the world. I said, "I ain't a faggot." But I only heard it around the playground. I didn't. I just thought it meant denim shorts or whatever. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> but I just knew I didn't want him to touch my junk anymore. But I didn't say, uh, Liz, does this nullify? I should have done some, you know, does yeah. this nullify our car contract? Because uh, it was when I graduated, the mo I put the work on the film, whatever, yep. his, distrib <laughs> his distribution, that's not my business. I'm just a fucking talent. You in front showed of up camera. for the shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I so let me get back to, I don't know, there's sometimes are straight lines in conversations. Anyway. Oh, I did one of those earlier. Anyway. <laughs> um, um, so what were you going through when you confronted him? Because he I, stayed, well, he stayed yeah. he and had this down. conversation for a long time. I don't want to say fact, fantasy figure, but he felt like well, a he fantasy a figure. Cop. Yeah. He did. He showed up with his wife and, and a cop. And then the cop turned on him. Yeah. So now the cop is the overseer of him. Like, wait. Yeah, he goes, do you want to press charges? And he's like, he wanted to help me or whatever, but he couldn't understand that, you know, the well, crime didn't take place in Florida. Yeah, anyway. See, you, uh, you, were, you were a little <laughs> verklempt. Uh, you Chris Hansen him. You I, said, hey, would you like to sit down? I sit did. Down. You I did. Chris yeah, Hansen, yeah, right. I yeah. was well-spoken, yeah. and uh, he, he was like, you had promised me a sweatsuit <laughs> and a car, and we, uh, you, what did you think when you were touching me? And I go, Doug what he's to trying to say. to his wife. Doug has to explain to the wife. She's confused. She's, like, Terrified. Mail order bride. And then he the just, wife is a mail order bride. <laughs> Doug explained like, pedophilia to her. Uh, yeah, broke it down with for her. Doug goes, you know, real nice. It's like a pedophile. She goes, what a pedophile? And I'm, you know, I'm not, to, uh, she was white or whatever. <laughs> I'll get canceled twice. No. <laughs> and if you call to try to get your uh, internet corrected after hours, You'll talk to someone who talked like this woman. Mm -hmm. and then you go, yeah, okay. yeah. Get the idea. <laughs> yeah. This is how Doug lured him out of the uh, out of the gated community. He calls him, and they called a bunch of times. And he never picked up, and all of a sudden he picks up, and Doug tells him that he's a private investigator. His name is Tim Heidecker. <laughs> First name that came to my head. He tells the guy he's a private investigator, and he knows that his daughter goes to college in Boston, and he goes, I have some information about your daughter. And as he put it, yeah, go for the kids. They got to yeah. come out and talk about the daughter, right? Even people that work. fuck kids care about their own kids. <laughs> so he shows up with a cop and his wife, and the cop says to Doug, you're a private investigator? And Doug says, no, I... I'm investigating I'm privately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That confused the cop because he was like, you know. Oh, okay, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Through the course of the confrontation, uh, Doug says to him, "Are you sorry for what you did?" That's right. Yeah. And the yeah, guy I got said, him. "And the guy, and you that's right. You this? brought it you up. You should watch yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he says, "Yeah." And then Doug goes, "I'm sorry." He goes, "So you're sorry?" Right. And the guy says, "Yeah." And he goes, the and cop Andy's going, uh, changes. Yeah, and the, co the cop completely turns, and that's when he puts his hand on the gun, like, it feels oh, this is a comfortable place to. Happen. Yeah, it's it was so fucking weird. It's so satisfying. For, uh, I think yeah, don't, for don't worry, officer, it takes him a minute to get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to run. <laughs> I just want to say, it feels so good in that moment when, as somebody who has been molested, to watch, to live through Andy's experience vicariously, to just go, like, I could have had this moment. It feels so good to watch you confront him. Yes. After the yeah. fact, he sued these guys. Oh. Yeah. He sued them because Andy was very afraid. He pointed to where all the cameras were that, you know, he was doing. And he even said to the guy, I'm making a documentary about our relationship. relationship. I think oh he was God. offended at a three camera shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so he hired lawyers and he got a what's called an ex parte decision from a judge without these guys knowing anything about it to uh, put an injunction against them doing anything with the footage. But also, they couldn't even talk about him. They couldn't even talk about this incident. Well, there's there's this whole act. But <laughs> the guy also instigates a suit for conspiracy, 
Really? Extortion. Yep. Uh, because they yeah, he, 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 he broke the deal, not so, me. So right. uh, um, invasion of privacy mm -hmm. and defamation, and um, so so this yeah. guy he goes, boy, he really liked fucking you. Well, yeah. He put a lot of time, you know, flew me out and shit, and for the dollar he didn't get Some a lot track of Some tracksuits. You know, he spent yeah. a lot of money on tracksuits. I get suits. Adidas sweatshirts. So anyway, they go, they end up going to court and testifying. And the guy is using it as an excuse that they're, they, as comedians, they make jokes about these things. They don't really seem like victims. And they used a podcast that Andy had done with Christine. He used that as evidence because Andy's talking about, I want to go get my car. Yeah. So the judge doesn't make a ruling on this until after he listens to Andy on Christine's podcast. The ruling finally comes down to where the judge says, they can do whatever they want, the footage, because this guy's so obviously guilty because the guy in the conversation, by not saying, well, I never touched you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, that's crazy talk, young right. man. The guy goes, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, -huh, he, uh -huh. he just And according to Florida law, that's an admission of guilt. Not denying yeah, the yeah. charge right. is an admission of guilt. So they end up winning the case, and the guy has all of Andy's testimony about what he did to him in public records, yeah, yeah. so we can say his name in the yeah. And now, pedophiles in Florida know how to get away with it. So just yeah, deny, yeah. deny, but deny. What, but what Andy wants is he wants the rights to his own tapes. Yeah. So he can sell his own child right. pornography. And he should, honestly. So where do you stand as an audience? <laughs> is Andy allowed to sell child <laughs> pornography if it's him? He's screaming, get that fucking car! Yeah. 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 You let him off the hook with the car. I wanted him to fucking... Hey, well, here's where Steve got squirrely, uh, you know. Uh, I go, you, you remember saying you bought me a car? And, uh, and then I, uh, when I graduated and I slid my diploma in, uh, from Coquille High School, 1984, I graduated in the la lower last three oh, that was hard. of a class of 100 of victim, all victims, so I was a real <laughs> underachiever. But I slid that diploma to him and he looked at it like it was a piece of shit and he said, all right, this is getting to be too much. Oh, and then Doug like turned into a Jewish woman and oh. said, do you want to buy him a sweatsuit? Uh, or <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, what? And he goes, that's what you bought him when you molested him. And he's like, he's oh, fucking yeah. limped. Come on. <laughs> can, can I ask a serious question? Or yeah. Something I wanted to know for a long time. How much of this do you put on your own parents? Well, uh, after my dad died, I was pretty kind of uh, uh, upset. Again, it's this fucking thing because it did affect how I you know, how it went with my dad, and, and if, you know, they just hadn't sent me to Palo Alto to get, I got raped in Silicon Valley before there was any tech. Oh. Then, uh, you can, there you before go. there was tech. Ooh, I uh, yeah. have yeah. uh, It turns out me and my shorts was a startup company. I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I didn't, I just didn't, my dad died, and I just didn't really, process of that you know like you do maybe and uh i was still mad i was mad at him because he put me in that position and this guy was not handsome he's no george clooney he looked like mr drummond or whatever how and, are we uh, going to sell these tapes with an ugly predator well <laughs> i think mostly his hands are uh, in it i don't think Aww. i think he was kind of camera the, shy what was the thing you said about the, about the uh, kinder the what a Tinder for child? Oh, yeah. I was like a, a Kinder? I, well, it was a part of the way I said you didn't get to choose your own pedophile. There wasn't a Tinder for kids where you get to flip through youth minister, youth minister, youth minister, <laughs> youth minister, youth minister, <laughs> cop, Pass, cop, best. youth minister, youth minister, <laughs> cop. Uh, uh, oh, gym coach. Uh, nah, Throw no, me an no. art teacher. Throw me an art teacher. Uh, our teacher, our teacher, our teacher. Every other teacher that had Annie in a classroom. Uh, youth minister, youth minister. Handicap guy. This is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh. it's, Ooh. It says he's got a heart of gold and a hot grip. <laughs> oh, man, man. That wasn't very good. Did it count as his physical therapy? To I think it, that's that's what I think. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't even know what this was. But uh, so we watched the Marilyn Chambers movie together. Oh, uh, and that was, you know, I mean, I, I was getting groomed by this f clumsy fuck and yeah. kind of getting aroused or whatever. And yeah. as soon as he showed me Marilyn Chambers, like, nah, you ain't getting a fucking, you know? <laughs> yeah. you know? He so tried to coach me. He, well, he goes, it's okay. He, well, I had a drink. 
Uh, so I had a drink. Uh, it's a key part of this. Uh, he uh, and we watched the Marilyn Chambers movie, and I was blown away. I'd never seen anybody hmm. do that. You know, she's fucking boss cocksucker, and, uh, and nobody it, since or so before Marilyn Chambers. Up, I woke up. I've been on. You know, I pick up. I, he was. Uh, Finish the sentence. <laughs> this. <laughs> When I finish the sentence, you're going to feel bad. Finish the movie, Paul. Finish the movie. He fake cancer. Come on. I just think the movie will sell better once Andy's gone. I don't, even know how, I don't even know how to Google this without looking like Pete Townsend or whatever. But he tried He tried to put, he was, I was, I guess, passed out because I didn't handle my drinks very well then either. And uh, he was trying to, this is part of the physical therapy. Like an 11-year-old. He, uh, he was trying to put my dick in his ass. Asshole, but at the time it was like, what's he trying to do? Pulling on my wiener, uh, trying to put in his buttocks or whatever. Uh, and I woke up, and that's why I've never been able to say that. Cause like, wait, was I the top? <laughs> he was trying to, you know, he was trying to. He was, you know. So anyway, that's why it's hard to say. We'll try it again at the Burbank <laughs> Marriott. Mm -hmm. If I just, uh -huh. I, we'll try it again. Your dick, my asshole. I'll pull it in at the Burbank Marriott. I'm trying to get sponsorship. Because this is a non-paying gig. I had to fly out here, put myself up, Uber myself to the place. Non-paying gig. I just want to say that last little story about the him uh, trying to put the butt, or the dick in the butt, and Andy's like, Thank what? God for whiskey dick. Yeah. Brought to you by the Marriott at Burbank. <laughs> nice. But also, that's how great it is to be Andy's friend. You'll get a call at like, you know, noon on a Sunday and be like, hey, I think I got fucked by this guy. And then let me run a bit by you. <laughs> Only it's all about how he almost got fucked by this cripple. Well, man. I think I almost fucked him. Oh, yeah, you almost fucked that's him. Right. My bad for getting mm -hmm. it. The She's other talking way about around. recent bits where you go, I was just at a Greyhound bus station trying to get down to this show, and I think I fucked this guy or he fucked me. And, and you're like, this is not when you're molested. This was tonight. <laughs> and he took it. And he took Andy where? He took Andy to the Marriott Burbank. Yes, that's it. The Marriott Burbank, which I'm sponsored by. <laughs> so, so Andy, after this whole incident, and we're now many years later. Uh, what's changed for you? Did it make a difference? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to be revenge. So I, you know, revenge, best served cold. Paul's got uh, 10 years. Pat's been going, oh, fuck, is this coming out? Uh, <laughs> it's, but uh, yeah, slowly, yeah, if, if I had to deal with the cancer, I mean, I made it, like people say, I wouldn't wish cancer on anybody. I had a, I sat in chemo chair and made a list of uh, people, but it's like, it's good, <laughs> it's good that that one kind of, I feel like we kind of evened evened it up or whatever. Now I think we can have that dialogue and get the car and... Uh, oh, uh, you worked uh, for that car, you should have it. I did the work. Uh, yes, yeah, the, did work the work was done. You know who got molested the most? Uh, was Henry Phillips. Didn't really get to say shit in this whole... Yeah. That's... Well, like, I, I think the is. real victim is Henry yeah. Phillips. I think so. Henry is here yeah. to give the opposing viewpoint yeah, from yeah. the pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, one, one time I was watching Geraldo, oh. and it was a long time ago, obviously, and... Uh, Can you sing this? Can you sing this? I should. Uh, they were interviewing a guy who had molested a bunch of kids, and they had, they had his silhouette, and he was talking, and his voice was distorted, but it said, Henry in quotes. <laughs> but I was like, that's fucked up, because that's not his name, obviously. They right. changed it. But they changed it to my name, so that's... Oh. How did they get away with that, you know? It's like, it's, it's somebody's name. Oh. And it, he kind of looked like me a little bit from the profile. Is this you coming yeah. out of some, but trying this, to, this like, is you, hide... Is this you trying to get ahead of the narrative, yeah. Henry? Yeah. Yeah. I told him, use the name Henry, but put it in quotes, so it looks like it's not my real name. His name was Philip Henry. <laughs> What I Smart. cannot understand is I've never been able to understand is like what is a an adult attraction to a child like why would you want to they can't color in the lines they're obnoxious they don't make their beds they don't <laughs> eat broccoli like why <laughs> they're not good at no. fucking why would you want to touch a child they're the worst they're obnoxious. Their hands are sticky. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. I've never understood it. You've clearly not seen Annie's pictures. Well, <laughs> but here's my point. My point.
point <laughs> is that people are constantly shamed and they don't talk about it. And if people had talked about it in Andy's life, if people had talked about it in Annie's life, there must have been some art student ahead of you. No. Oh, that's uh, right. You know? If people fucking trivia. talked about oh, it, so much would be different. And, and people are afraid to talk about it because they're shamed or they're embarrassed or whatever the case may be. When, let's face it, 90% of everybody here was fiddled as a kid. And if you weren't, you're ugly. You're ugly as shit. <laughs> fuck, no. I'm get, what I mean is, that's why I love what these guys are doing is because they're talking about stuff that's difficult for people to talk about and they're creating a paradigm, a way to deal with this stuff that's not morose and self, self-defeating. self yeah. So I, I, I give you guys credit. It's awesome. This is the one joke that I, every time I do it, I go, it's wrong to do Hopefully this it's a closer. Type of, Let's go. And I go, listen, uh, remember that most people that abuse uh, children sexually were themselves sexually abused when they were children. So what I'm saying is, believe victims, just probably don't let them babysit. (laughs) (laughs) Doug Stanhope, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all. Henry Phillips, ladies and gentlemen. Andy Letterman, Christine Levine, Andy Andrews. Doug Stanhope, thank you all for coming and being you. I'm Paul Provenza. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you to everybody at Nowhere Comedy. Dave Smalley, Ben Cleave, everybody's Thank you to Kelly Carlin. Thank you to Barbara Roman. Thank you to Ryan Elio. Thank you to Jay Crowe. Thank you to Michael Frank. Michael Frank.